In Luke chapter 8, verses 4 through 8, Luke writes, While a large crowd was gathered, and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell along thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop, a hundred times more than what was sown. When he said this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. At this point in the life of Jesus, he has done a lot of things. He's preached a lot of sermons, healed a lot of people, and there are people who are following him wherever he goes. His disciples are expecting to see even more spectacular things from him because they believe he's the Messiah they've been waiting for. But something is starting to confuse them. Jesus will do an amazing miracle, preach a great sermon, and people will watch, and then they'll leave and go home like nothing has ever happened. The religious leaders would come, complain about Jesus, and then leave and go home. If Jesus was the Messiah they were waiting for, why were so many people rejecting him? Jesus is telling his disciples this parable to help them understand why some people are rejecting his teaching. In this parable, Jesus describes four different types of soil that represent four different types of people. Each type of soil gets the same seed. Each person hears the same message, but all four respond to it differently. The hard path represents those who have hard hearts. They're full of pride, and they don't like it when Jesus calls them out on their hypocrisy. These would be like the religious leaders during his time. They were wealthy and powerful, and they cared more about their public image than who they were on the inside. Everything they did was for show. They didn't have room for God's word in their hearts. It never affected them. It couldn't even take root. The next type is the shallow, rocky ground. These are people who like the things that Jesus says at first. They like the miracles, they like being healed, and they're willing to follow Jesus as long as they can get something out of it. But the words of Jesus are never really taking root in their lives. As soon as there's difficulty or suffering as a result of being around Jesus, they quickly turn away to something else. Many of Jesus' followers faced a lot of persecution. Even just admitting that Jesus had healed you could get you in trouble in some places. A lot of people weren't willing to face that, so they never let themselves get too drawn in to what Jesus was teaching. The third type of soil is the one covered in thorns. These are people that like some of the things Jesus says. They'll follow him and maybe try to apply a few things he teaches, but they're so focused on the other things in life that they can't make Jesus the priority. When something else comes up, they're off to focus on that other thing. The thorns represent the worries and concerns of life, chasing after wealth or pleasure, and it takes priority over God's word. The last type of soil represents those who have room in their hearts for what Jesus has to say. They hear the message and it changes them completely. It doesn't just produce a little plant, it produces an actual harvest that impacts not only their own lives, but the lives of others as well. The good soil represents the people who truly become disciples of Jesus. I remember when I first heard this parable, I asked myself what kind of soil I was. It's important for us to examine our lives and see if there are things preventing God's word from really growing and producing a harvest in us. Sometimes it's pride that hardens our hearts. Sometimes it's a fear of how others will treat us or the suffering we might face by following Jesus. Sometimes it's focusing so much on the material things of this world that we don't have time for God. When we see those things in our lives, we should pray and ask God to make more room for Him in our hearts. When we do that, 
God's Word starts to grow in us, transforming us, ultimately producing something that changes not only us, but also affects the people around us. That's the harvest of eternal life. This parable is a reminder to each of us not to be discouraged when we see other people rejecting the messages Jesus teaches. Jesus was encouraging his disciples to not lose heart just because there were hearts that weren't receptive to the messages they were sharing. Instead, we need to make room for God's word to grow in our own hearts and pray that God will equip us to share his word with others. Hope everyone has been having a great week. Let me know if there's any way I can be praying for you and looking forward to seeing you on Sunday to talk about one of the most important parables Jesus teaches, the parable of the unmerciful servant. As always, if you ever need anything, I'm just one phone call away. Well, it's been a while since I've done the stick figure videos. Stick figure animations are nice because I can add all the characters I want. I don't need to worry about the costumes or the props. I can change the weather, make lightning, anything. The downside is it just takes too much time to make the pictures. I think next time I need to switch back to live video. I think the audio came out a bit better this time though.